So after the last video, um, we had a bug near the end uh, that after recording and I was editing the video, I played back and realized where the mistake was or where the bug was. Uh, so I went ahead and fixed it and pushed the, it's only a few lines of code that fixed the issue. Um, but after I'd done that, I then kind of realized that's a really good missed opportunity to record, you know, fixing a fairly um, hard bug, if you will, something that most people wouldn't know or wouldn't click into because it's not obvious even looking at the code and I missed it multiple times. Um, so because I've already fixed it, I can't kind of do a live debug, but I'm going to do my best to replicate, well, I can replicate exactly what I did uh, and show you how I come exactly to find that bug and show you some new techniques in debugging. Uh, so let's get to it. So the first thing I've done is rolled back the code to at the end of the video before the bug was fixed. Uh, and then we'll jump in now and have a look at how I basically solved this issue. So if we go to the app XAML, uh, I'll first show you here uh, what the code um, or what code I first did. So before this, we didn't have this in here. That's the only thing I've added as extra. I just got rid of that. Um, and we just had, you know, load the settings initially without doing anything. So also first done, this is the way I reproduced the error because the difficulty I was having was even reproducing the error. So all I've done is wrapped it in a task because we are inside a non, uh, oh, in fact, we are inside an asynchronous. Oh yeah, sorry, I've wrapped it in a task because I don't want to actually await um, the main application start. I simply want to keep hammering the um, this request over and over. And we also don't await this because I just want to basically keep hammering it with load requests that are going on one after the other uh, in parallel, which is what's causing the error. Um, so if I do that and I just start the application up, uh, it'll obviously be really slow because it's going to be hit by hundreds of requests a second to do the load. But this is what, you know, indefinitely found the error or repeated the error for me. Um, so I could see what was going on. So if we leave this to run and it starts up, um, and you can see all the database hits here. So this is running through now and hitting the database up over and over. And it will end up um, hitting the bug. Um, presuming I also have error catching on, which I do. Yep. So this is what, for me, caused the error to happen. Now, maybe I need to remove that delay uh, because I don't think I even had the delay in quite like that. Um, so let me just stop that and do what else I think I did, which was to run a few of these. I think that's where the issue come from uh, but this should repetitively get us to the point of there was a few bugs but the main one that I'll get to that's the hard to debug one is what I want to see and um, so this should definitely hit the same issue I found um, there we go so this is the issue we were getting intermittently um, and at first at the end of the video when I was looking through these statements here um, I thought and I even put it in the end of the video that we've got two connection requests. Um, and that's what made me think was two connections going on at the same time. Now we didn't, what we had was um, connecting and connected as a statement. Um, so I'm just scrolling up so we can find you one. Um, so close, close, closed. We have, I probably scrolled over three of them already, but let me just get this into a notepad. Oh, really? Okay, so there's apparently no connecting statement. Uh, so opening and open. So I saw these two and thought it was two opening statements to a connection, which led me down the first path, which is, is correct, there's one issue. So now we can repeat the error, basically. This is the error I'm trying to solve. Um, so that made me first think, oh, there's two requests. So then I dug deep into the call, the um, load async call. And I kept looking at it, I'm like, how can we have two? Uh, and funnily enough, I remember actually helping somebody else with this issue uh, with um, dependency injection. So this call here, which we're doing, that looks like we're just calling into an object to run a function. Every time we call client data store, we are fetching it from the framework directly as a service. So it's actually a method, it's not just a, a property. Um, so we call it here, and then we also call it here. 
And then I finally clicked in after remembering helping somebody. If you look at how we bind the data store right now, we add it as a transient. And that's because we don't currently make use of scopes, which I think we should do um, in future videos. Um, and then we could wrap this in a scope much nicer than doing what we have to do to fix this now. Um, but what the transient means is every single time you call services.get, every single request will return a new copy. So what that means is when we do await client store.get login credentials, it will spin up um, a instance of the client data store, get this, and then we get some value. And then afterwards, when we call this, we get a different instance. And then again, in here, we get a different instance. So we've got three instances of um, the same store being recreated. And instead, what we should do is really wrap this whole thing in a scope and then provide it. So for now, instead of doing that, I basically did scoped, or rather to do that, scoped client data store. And then I just got the variable and saved it. So I did oh, scoped client data store equals client data store. And it looks a bit strange like that. But what we've done there effectively is called framework.service to get a single instance. And then I pass this everywhere we call it here. Um, so I pass it here. I also passed it into this function. So I did I client data store scope client data store. And then in there, I did the scoped client data store. Um, and then when we go back to there, we can pass it in. So that every instance, um, for those, every instance has the same copy, if you will, um, of that data store. And I thought, right, good, that'll fix it. But when I look closer after fixing, I realized that uh, basically that wouldn't fix it because the only time that'd be an issue is if you pulled data from one data store and then reused it in another. But in this instance, it just happens to be that we don't, we, we create a data model and add it um, and all the other values are to remove. Um, so it's all like kind of self-contained. So we don't, we don't actually cross boundaries of what we use, uh, but it would cause an issue typically. Um, so that is something that would have caused an issue and this is the correct fix for that. But that didn't fix the overall issue. So I ran it again thinking I'd fix the issue. And really there's only one other um, main fix to this, uh, which is an interesting fix uh, that I really had to think on. It was based on my presumption. I might be wrong on my presumption. I haven't bothered digging too deep into the reason, but I hit this and I was debugging. What I was actually doing is stepping through, say into one of these. Um, and when I was stepping through with F5, I ended up getting, and it's very hard to, uh, or rather very easy to miss, but if you debug and you hit a line and you step through the code, if two things are happening at once, I ended up stepping into the same line twice um, when I was debugging and I was like, how is that possible? How have I just double stepped? And then it clicked to me, then I must have two of the same call running. Well, if we look at the call stack, the run command should lock the updating flag. It should lock. We should never ever be able to run two of these actions at the same time, if we've passed in the same thing, which is the settings loading, which is definitely the same thing, and I keep passing in. Um, so I opened up uh, debug window and tasks. And then in the tasks here, I scrolled down and I noticed we'd got one running, Let's see if I can clear this up a little bit. We got, you just have to find the right one as well. So we've got one running here. Um, and one running here, say. And I'm pretty sure these are the, the two correct ones, but if you look at the call stack, what you're looking for is two that are inside of the run command. So here's a run command uh, here, which is from a load async command in this uh, this one here. But then you've also got this one here, um, which is also in the run command uh, for the exact same thing. So we have two tasks running inside the same run command async at the same point in time. These are at the same point in time right now. So we've got two, these two tasks are running at the same time. Both of them have managed to get inside the run command async, which ultimately means this is not locking the way I thought it was. Um, so then I was like, that is definitely the issue. And that always makes sense because this issue is typically due to calling, you know, the same call twice. 
But when I already looked at that and made my assessment, even on the video, I was like, this is a lock, it's pretty simple. You're locking on the object passed in. It's fairly sorted, it can't go wrong. What I overlooked was, we're not passing in settings loading. We're passing in an expression of the settings loading. So in, in instances where the settings loading value hasn't changed, that's Boolean, so it's still say false, um, this expression will be, I'm presuming again, I haven't bothered digging into the compiler or into the IR and, and checked anything, but my presumption that seems to be correct because it's fixed the issue is that once the, either once the settings value changes um, or simply a point in time when the compiler or the garbage collector decides to optimize things, this expression, which you think of as, you know, um, bar A equals, which you can't do that, you've got to tell it it's an expression, but, um, you know, if you put a variable here of an expression of, um, what do we pass in? An expression of a function of a Boolean, say, you can think of it like that. We're passing in effectively that. So that means every time you call load async, you are making a new local variable and then you're locking on this new local variable. Well, that local variable isn't the same thing. Um, so it's either the fact that simply this lock has never worked um, and we were just coincidentally okay. Or when you inline it like this, the compiler is optimizing it, keeping it in memory for a few cycles. And then when the value changes, this is a new object. So ultimately the solution is we shouldn't be locking on this update flag because that is not a fixed item like I presumed it would be. I was trying to shortcut the need to pass in a unique object or unique string for every lock, as well as already passing in, you know, the, the property. Um, so I could change it to pass in an object um, and then pass in a settings loading again, say, like this. Uh, but then it, it's starting to not look very dry. So my fix, if you will, for now, my solution um, for fixing this is quite simple. The run command async is entirely designed, and it kind of mentions it here, that really you should be passing in just a property that wants to get be get and set. So, well, it's, it's got to be, because that's what we're doing here. We're expecting it to be a property. So, so long as the thing that you're passing in, the settings loading, inside of its getter or setter doesn't do anything that takes a while, which we're never going to do. It's always just simply going to get and set an actual property. Then I just globally lock this entire call, which means that every single call from every single command would wait on each other while just while this lock's being checked. But the time in which that takes is nanoseconds. It's absolutely infinitesimally small. So all I've done for now, which I'm happy with for the fix for now, is just put a protected object here. And let's just call it M lock in this case, or M global lock. Make it a new object. And then I commented it and stated this is the global lock in the, you know, the committed code. And then all I've done is change the lock to lock on this global lock. And then done it on the other call as well. Um, and what you'll find now is when we lock in here, this is definitely going to work because it is 100% locking any check, regardless of the, the property being passed in. But the downside is that it'll do that for every call regardless. But as I mentioned, it's that small, you will never, ever notice that that lock. Um, the only time this would mess up is if the property you pass in has a getter or setter that does something that takes time, which is generally not advised anyway. Um, so now if we just simply run, um, I'll just get rid of that tasks now. Um, this will just keep running and keep going and going and going. And I've left this running for like 20 minutes and it never fails, if you will. So that's really uh, the fix that I've done to, um, you know, solve that issue. And that is definitely the solution. Um, but I thought it was interesting mainly because how discreet the uh, Lambda expression was to pass in an expression that we locked on. And even I overlooked it multiple times. And even when I wrote the first code, never noticed. Um, and it was also sort of very intermittent, very rare, and it's all based on timing. Um, so I thought it was one of them things that is, is clearly a difficult thing to debug. And unfortunately I solved it off camera because I was just thinking at the time, oh, I think it's this and quickly solved it. Um, but the steps I used to view the tasks and to step into the debugger and realize there's two tasks running and, and that thought process I thought was very important and probably what most people don't know um, <clears throat> or they, you know, they've never done before. So I thought I'd just repeat this kind of process as a quick video um, and hopefully 
you've learned something from this video uh, and you'll find it useful and it'll help you in debugging other situations. Uh, so as always, any questions, comments, or you know whatever you want to do, you can post them in the comments and I always get back to everybody uh, and I hope you enjoyed it.